span of this of this paragraph if you will it's almost like it's a warning there are warnings okay there are warnings about this okay even um i don't know even though it's an awakening they're giving you warnings and to me that's very telling especially for a website that actually uh fosters and facilitates these types of, of things of spirituality they consider to be spirituality okay so we're they actually give um wow let me see how many of uh, 15 okay 15 uh signs you're going through an awakening due to this particular energy the first one is you have a feeling of freedom from the ego and from the material realm number two you feel euphoric in the moment and have a sense of resounding peace Number three, you transcend the dual nature of the mind and are able to see what we consciously create, okay, our reality. Number four, you feel love and compassion for all that is that is, and recognize yourself as an intrinsic part of all. Number five, your mind is noticeably more still with a new ability to focus on one thought at a time. Hmm. Your mind is able to witness, observe, and discern very interesting and it says thanks to an open crown chakra open crown number seven old problems okay and even past trauma do not have the same effect on you anymore you remember them but they no longer bother you oh number eight you may feel pleasurable physical sensations I'll leave it at that. Number nine, you have profound new insights into your life or even past lives. Number 10, you have a newfound strength and clarity that allows you to make positive changes in your life without fear. Number 11, your creativity surges. Number 12, you have significant increase in empathy. Number 13, your body may shake. Oh, this can happen, they say in parentheses, can happen if Kundalini is rising, but your chakras are not clear, so the energy isn't able to flow. Your body may shake. Number 14, you feel heat in the spine. This would again be an instance of rising Kundalini energy. You know, every time they use that awakening, rising Kundalini, I have a picture in my mind of this like, Mungo snake that's what I'm picturing in my mind I don't see anything on here well they tell you what the word means obviously so that's you know coiled snake so that's what I'm picturing in my mind's eye is that and it's not a little snake it's a huge snake just making its way up to the crown of your head that's what I I picture I don't see it going downward I see it going upward you feel heat in the spine. Okay, this again would be an instance of rising Kundalini energy not quite flowing properly. And number 15, the last one, you have trouble sleeping. Parentheses, this is another example of what can happen when Kundalini rises in a body with chakras that are not fully clear. So this particular um, blog or um, article is uh, a bit lengthy and that makes sense in a way. So I'm not going to read everything they have here. If you'd like to check it out, you can. It is at mbg, which is mindbodygreen.com. You want to research it for yourself um, like I'm doing. Uh, you want to just, you know, check it out or whatever to see what the information is here. I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to read a little bit more when it talks about the pros and the cons of this particular awakening that you're going to have based on this energy or spirit. Okay. So the pros are is that when you have this Kundalini awakening, number one, can bring you to self-realization or as rebel. Rebelle explains self-realization of the soul as an immortal, immortal being. Number two, you may reach a state of bliss and resounding love. 
Number three, you have a quiet mind. Any problem can be solved with a clear mind, a mind that isn't congested with lingering structures and all that stopping us from growing, stuck in who we think we are, she says. Number four, you may experience spiritual enlightenment, which is a connection with all there is and an understanding that we are continually creators of all there is all the time creators interesting term and number five you may have increased creativity and compassion okay so those were the pros now at first glance it sounds harmless it actually sounds good in a way right okay so let's look at what the cons are now i haven't read it beforehand i wanted to read it uh, along with you guys you know to first time I'm doing this is here and looking at it sometimes you guys know I like to look at it beforehand and read it and then you know present it and sometimes I like to just for the first time when I start to record an episode read it here okay so it's at the cons it is possible cons to raise this energy by accident or without being ready most of us have chakras that are very congested. I keep getting that impression. Blocked, congested, not flowing well. Adding that people should be careful of trying to go about waking up their Kundalina. I don't know why. I don't know. Sounds funny a little bit. Mm, Kundalini. Okay. It echoes uh, this thought. Another um, yoga instructor echoes this thought saying you can raise your kundalini by accident but it doesn't raise your consciousness number two now there's five pros and it looks like there's only three cons hmm okay number two kundalini awakenings will be different for everyone and some say it can feel like and i want you to listen like a bad drug trip or straight up psychosis hmm Number three, in a body that does not have clear chakras, there it is again, unpleasant physical symptoms can also arise, like body spasms. And basically what they're saying is overheating. Hmm. Okay, wait a minute. I was going to cut it off here, but I think I want to continue a little bit further because I saw something. I actually saw something when I skimmed over. It, it says Kundalini awakening versus spiritual awakening. Okay, as Rebelle explains, the difference between a Kundalini awakening and a spiritual awaken, awakening can be difficult to discern in the moment. It's not always possible to know if our Kundalini energy is rising <laughs> or we're going through a different kind of spiritual experience. Interesting. It goes on to say we can have the instances of this awakening and then we can also have instances of upper chakras opening. She says they don't have to be related, but they can be. Now according to her, these upper upper excuse me chakras opening, this is the part, okay, can manifest. So this is another term that is used a lot when you're talking about spirituality, spiritual experiences that are outside of um, organized uh, religion, religions. And it kind of uh, spills over into um, what a lot of people say is the New Age movement, okay? New Age, okay? Manifest. So in sudden, manifest and sudden realizations, visions, insights, connecting with spirits mm, connecting with spirits psychic insights experiences of a sudden feeling of love out of nowhere and more and more but that doesn't necessarily mean it's kundalini now look at that so if this whole thing is kundalini okay that's very interesting that they will say that even though they are referring to spiritual awakening as well, trying to uh, give the distinction, if you will, between the two. Um, but like they said at the beginning, it, it requires a certain amount of discernment. Sometimes it's hard to do that. Oh, 
Okay, so to put it simply, a Kundalini awakening can be classified as a type, okay, of spiritual awakening, but a spiritual awakening isn't always related.